As you likely know by now, muscle mass is very protective. In today's show, we're going to talk about two recently published studies that found that muscle mass helps enhance survival and reduces the odds of death in people who have chronic kidney disease as well as breast cancer. Now, I'm not the only one that's been talking about this. We know Dr. Gabrielle Lyon, Sean Baker, many other people have been highlighting the important protective effect of muscle tissue, not just highlighting the deleterious effects of increased fat mass. It seems that as a society, many people are focused on weight loss, on losing fat, losing weight, but we really should be shifting our framework and the paradigm to supporting muscle mass because it turns out that in people with chronic disease, such as breast cancer or chronic kidney disease, the amount and independent effect of muscle that it has or imparts on enhancing survivability in these complex chronic disease states is now quantifiable. And today we're going to talk more about that, particularly in patients with chronic kidney disease. I know this title is a little bit jargonistic, but let's talk about this paper titled Higher Muscle Mass and Higher Serum and pre-albumin levels are associated with better survival in hemodialysis patients during a five-year observational period. Now, essentially what these researchers found is when looking at muscle mass using a bioimpedance analysis, so this is something that you can readily do at most gyms and fitness centers now, is look at a bioimpedance, which looks at phase angle. It helps to quantify or enumerate the amount of lean muscle mass you have. You can also do a DEXA scan. There's underwater weighing. There's a lot of different ways to go about this, but essentially what these scientists found in patients with chronic kidney disease is there was an, a significant survival benefit for those that had higher quantities of muscle which really helps you to reframe your lifestyle prescription when it comes to what are the foods that you're going to eat, whether it's a, you know, a plant-based food or a high-protein food. What are the exercises that you should be focusing on if you have, say, 45 minutes to exercise? Should you go for a run? Nothing wrong with going for a run, but if you're not also resistance training, you might not be maximally protecting your body when it comes to enhancing longevity and supporting uh, the prevention of various disease states. So in this particular study, what they found is the likelihood of surviving more than five years, and this, these are patients with chronic kidney disease, getting hemodialysis and so forth, uh, in each higher muscle mass quartile was highest for patients with greatest muscle mass. And this is independent of fat mass. So again, I think I'm guilty of promoting the deleterious effects of fat and talking about how we know that visceral adipose tissue in specifically uh, releases adipocytokines like leptin, visfatin, resistin, uh, and decreases the amounts of the protective adipocytokine known as ad adiponectin. But now we know that muscle is also a metabolically active organ, and it might enhance longevity and support and reduce the odds of death in various chronic disease states. So they found that a lower muscle tissue index, an equivalent of muscle mass, measured by bioimpedance spectroscopy also correlated with a worse survival rate in dialysis patients in recent studies. So this is just one of many studies and the scientists talk about why this might be. Why could low levels of muscle enhance the odds of not surviving in people who are getting dialysis or have chronic kidney disease. And it has to do with the inflammatory milieu and signaling. So the loss of muscle could be a consequence of the underlying inflammation and also that the presence of muscle could counterbalance some of the chronic inflammatory cytokines and the uh, such as TNF alpha, interleukin six, interleukin one beta, and much more. They also looked at prealbumin and albumin levels. And this is something my mentor taught me a long time ago, is when you see a sudden drop in albumin, that is known as an ominous marker. We talk a lot about this in the blood work masterclass, ominous marker, shifts in cholesterol, sudden shifts in GGT, which is gamma glutamyl transpeptidase, one of your liver enzymes. And it turns out based upon this study, and other studies that a drop in albumin is an ominous marker that actually was independently associated with an increased odds of mortality in patients with chronic kidney disease. And so they found that both low muscle mass and low albumin as well as pre-albumin were proxies that would indicate a lower survival rate. And so again, the, the sort of synopsis of this study is muscle mass is protective in particularly with people with chronic kidney disease. And we know that there's a vascular element with people with chronic kidney disease. The kidneys, the nephrons are a series of, of capillaries and blood vessels. And so various other studies we've talked about over the years. Uh, in fact, in the last 60 days, we posted a video talking a lot about how muscle mass in, independently predicted a lower odds of having a major cardiovascular event. And so this is just a series of studies. Uh, also, because COVID-19 was a hot topic for many of you over the past three years or so, 
this study was, I think, important to recognize as well. Phase angle and standardized phase angle from bioimpedance measurements as a prognostic factor for mortality at 90 days in patients with COVID-19. This related study found that low levels of muscle mass was independently associated with a higher odds of death from COVID-19. Now, lest I remind you, gyms were closed, parks were closed, fitness centers were closed, but now we know that muscle is so protective. And so isolating people in their homes, forcing them to be sedentary, obviously probably didn't help at the population level. Now, before we get into breast cancer, I wanna thank you for being here. Thanks for sharing this video as a direct text message to a friend to help them better understand the importance of muscle mass, resistance training, and protein. Speaking of protein and muscle, you know that exercise is so important for preserving and maintaining healthy muscle mass through our lifespan. So that's why we created the Electrolyte Sticks with Creatine. It's one of the only electrolytes out there featuring real salt, therapeutic amounts of creatine, along with bioavailable minerals like Albion chelated magnesium, potassium, you get real salt, you get taurine, and calcium. This is an awesome pre or intra workout formula. There's over 450 reviews over at myoscience.com from real life people like you who are trying to optimize their health and get the most mileage from their exercise sessions. So you can use this before you exercise or during exercise or even after exercise or after a sauna. You can save using the code podcast over at myoscience.com. This is a great flavored and one of the only creatine containing electrolyte sticks out there. You might be wondering why electrolytes with creatine. Well, the electrolytes help enhance the absorption of creatine and creatine also helps with athletic performance. And we know that electrolytes are great for athletic performance. So again, you can save over at myoscience.com. That's M-Y-O-X-C-I-E-N-C-E.com. So let's go back and talk about the prevalence, the high, scarily high prevalence of muscle loss in the context of breast cancer. We know breast cancer is on the rise. And could it be that loss of muscle or insufficient levels of muscle actually are an etiological driver of the higher prevalence of breast cancer? Well, this study indicates that a significantly higher proportion of women with early or preclinical breast cancer have muscle loss. And we don't know what the, you know, the scientists don't talk about the direction of causality. Is the loss of muscle mass increasing the prevalence of breast cancer? Or is it, again, the inflammatory milieu that is wasting muscle? But all that being said, it seems that muscle has a protective effect on the etiology and the progression of breast cancer. So the scientists say the prevalence of sarcopenia in patients with breast cancer was assessed according to the EWG SOP2 criteria. So this is a criteria. This is the, uh, I think the, the group that looks at sarcopenia and they have a different diagnostic criteria. And they say that the sarcopenia was found in 14% of patients with breast cancer and was absent in the control group. So this is important to recognize if you compare people, women specifically with breast cancer compared to those without, it's a little bit less than one in five actually have diagnosed sarcopenia. They go on to say, moreover, a considerable number of patients with breast cancer were pre-sarcopenic, showing characteristics to sarcopenic patients. So about one in three patients with breast cancer had pre-sarcopenia or pre-muscle loss compared to non-sarcopenic patients. So this is important, suggesting again, that there is some sort of direction of, or some link here with sarcopenia and the etiology of breast cancer, which is important to recognize because it, it it's well recognized within the oncologic world and chemotherapy and so forth. People with low muscle mass or sarcopenia have a higher toxicity associated with the chemotherapeutic agents and have worse uh, outcomes when it comes to administration of those drugs should one decide to use chemotherapy when they are diagnosed with cancer. So muscle mass has an independent benefit with regards to conventional treatment with cancer, but also we now know that, that patients with breast cancer have a much higher prevalence of sarcopenia. So what's interesting here is based upon a systematic uh, review, the prevalence of sarcopenia in patients with different types of cancer evaluating before the start of treatment was nearly 40%. And this is, I think, quite scary if we think about, you know, again, could we prevent cancer or dramatically reduce the odds that one has, you know, when it comes to the development of cancer by just encouraging or, or shifting the mindset away from focusing on weight loss and fat loss to preserving muscle mass? So we know that, that there uh, is an independent benefit. And so the scientists say, the study assessed sarcopenia in Italian women with early stage breast cancer Obtaining a prevalence of 43%, the higher values were found in the population can be probably explained by the older age of the patients. 
So again, I think this is just quite interesting that there is a large dossier of literature suggesting that there's a much higher prevalence of sarcopenia in patients with cancer. And now we have this data with regards to breast cancer. So what are the take home messages here? What do we make of this? Well, I think it, as we've talked about up to now, that we need to reframe uh, and, and renew our focus away from just fat is bad. We know that fat is problematic. We know that excessive visceral adipose tissue, it's unsightly, it's inflammatory in nature, uh, it can uh, increase risk for cardiometabolic disease. But we also need to then focus on, well, what do we do differently? And prioritizing protein, prioritizing sleep, recovery, and intense physical activity that involves some element of resistance training. So whether it's body weight exercises like pull-ups, push-ups, military presses, we, you know, there's all sorts of ways to induce you know, hypertrophy by, by body weight and incorporating um, a resistance training or bands um, with weights can be helpful. And again, we just talked about three studies. And in the last couple of months, we talked about that, that other study in patients with major cardiovascular events, finding an independent benefit of uh, lean mass and how the loss of lean mass better predicted a major cardiovascular event compared to fat gain. And so it seems that the science is quickly changing. And again, this is, some, this is something that practitioners have been talking about for a long time. Dr. Gabrielle Lyon, Andy Galpin, uh, Andrew Huberman, we know that Sean Baker, many other people have, Lane Norton, have been talking about the importance of muscle. And it's not just a thing for meatheads anymore. We have these chronic complex diseases for which mainstream medicine doesn't have the best tools to remedy, and they're finding an independent association with loss of muscle and sarcopenia and higher risk of either premature death or having poor outcomes. And so if you're thinking about, okay, I have 20 minutes to exercise, should I go for the run or should I do 100 push-ups with rests in between or air squats or deadlifts or hip hinges with a kettlebell? Um, if it were up to me, I would suggest the latter as opposed to the former, i.e. prioritize resistance training and when you have the extra time, then you can do some cardio on top of that. Um, so I think it's quite fascinating to see this coming from a lot of different angles with regards to the peer-reviewed academic literature. So friends, I would love to know what you think about this. Let me know in the comments below. As always, thanks for tuning in all the way through. Thanks for uh, sharing this video and hitting that like button. And we'll catch you on a future episode down the road. Bye now.